Sounds good. All right, here we go. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Prop Live. This is a show we do every single week where we take your prop and costume making questions and we answer them. Uh, I'm Bill from Punish Props. As always, I'm here right down in the basement, joined by the wonderful chat below me and a wonderful guest. Everybody say hello to Emma Bell. Hello. How are you guys? Looks like everyone's doing great in the chat. We got, let's see, six people in there right now. There'll be more later, I'm sure, as they jump in. Folks, if you're watching live, you can go to punishprops.com slash live to see all the information about getting into our live IRC chat. Uh, so do that. Also, go check out the event page, uh, the Google Plus event page, to ask some questions. We'll be answering those in a little bit. Uh, we didn't get many earlier today, so if you have a question about prop or costume making, Drop it in the Q&A app, and we'll answer those. So let them come crashing in. All right. Hey, Emma, what's going on in your world? What have you been working on? Um, so I haven't been doing a ton of costume stuff lately. Mostly I've been focusing on our uh, embroidery. Uh, my husband and I run an embroidery business out of our home. But um, coming up, I'm going to be working on a few new costumes for PAX. Um, I'm going to be making Tracer from uh, Blizzard's new game, mm -hmm. Overwatch. And my husband is going to be making Hanzo from Overwatch. So I'm um, oh, looking forward cool. to do that. Yeah, so you, got, you guys are planning on to go and do uh, the old BlizzCon again? Oh, uh, you know what? We didn't get tickets this year. Um, oh. Unless we somehow, last year we got really lucky and came into some tickets about two weeks before. So if that oh. happens again, we might like make our way down. But uh, yeah, no luck this year. All right. Well, uh, anyway, folks should definitely go over to Etsy and look up Emma Bellish. Uh, on Etsy, you got your store there with a whole bunch of really cool embroidery patches. Yeah. Uh, how do you make those? Those are neat. <laughs> um, so we uh, have a couple of embroidery machines, and uh, my husband Coco does up all the digital files. And um, we just plunk them into the embroidery machine, and away it goes. Uh, we do a lot of um, custom embroidery for costumes as well. So if you need any custom embroidery, just send us a message on Etsy or on Facebook, and uh, we'll see what we can do for you. But That's um, so yeah. cool. I'm, I might have to do that. <laughs> I already <laughs> see, like, on the first page, like, five things I need. I definitely need the Destiny Jade Rabbit. We've got a lot of Destiny patches. We just keep getting requests for more and more of them, and they've just been, yeah, accumulating. So, uh, yeah. Let's see. We got Mass Effect patches. I'm in. I'm all in on that. Uh, a Titan, obviously. Let's see what else we got here. <laughs> there's, yeah, there's uh, some Persona Five, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, Borderlands. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, just tons of stuff up there. X Men. Let's do one more, one more page here. See something else. Of course, the N Seven patch, like you do. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, that's fantastic. Uh, Folks should definitely yeah. go over and check that out. Now, you, like you said, you're working on costumes. You don't just do the, the uh, embroidery thing, but you do a whole bunch of cool costumes. In fact, I do. I think the first time I ran into you was at BlizzCon, and you were a treasure goblin. Yes. Yeah, that was actually, so that was last year, and um, I put through that costume together in two weeks. Uh, like I said, we came into some tickets, like, right before the convention, and um, so, yeah, I, I sculpted the uh, mask in a day, and then cast, molded it and cast it in latex, and then airbrushed a bodysuit and made a big... Uh, treasure gobble, like treasure bag um, that lit up. And that was really awesome. Cause um, it, it, you'll recall at BlizzCon, it's like super dark in the convention center. Mm -hmm. And so you get, I had this glowing treasure goblin bag that was uh, really awesome. Uh, I found this, I it just took me a second, but I found the picture. And once it loads up, I will show you guys. There it goes. Boop, there it is, ha <laughs> ha. Treasure <laughs> goblin. That was fun. You ran up to me. I was like, holy crap. And then you're like, no, it's, it's Emma. I was like, oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> 
yeah, that was a lot of fun to uh, to wear. I fortunately didn't get beat up at all, so. <laughs> yeah, people chasing you down, hoping they could get some uh, some treasure out of you. <laughs> yeah, little chasing, no actual like physical abuse. <laughs> oh, good, good. Well, you were, and somehow I missed you, but you were up here at Emerald City, weren't you? Yeah, um, I was there. Yeah, the entire weekend, I had a couple of Dragon Age costumes that I was wearing. Um, I was doing, let's see, I had just made a Cole costume. That was it. Oh, um, yeah. So we were there at, uh, we actually had a group that was competing in the contest. We were the big Dragon Age group. That's right. Um, so yeah. The, somehow the judges just didn't appreciate it. Those jerks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> To be fair, there was a lot of really amazing costumes there, oh, so we can't really hold it against you. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was extra. I was really kind of taken aback. Uh, yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. Uh, so we got uh, we you know, we don't have a lot of questions coming in yet, folks watching live. Make sure you jump into the uh, event page and throw us some questions before we get started on that. I have a couple of things that I want to talk about. Uh, you ready for this? Here we go. <laughs> there's a there's a really cool thing my friend uh, Megan Marie is doing called cosplay. Play on words, everybody. Cosplay, pretty cool. Uh, she got a bunch of cosplayers to donate stuff like prints and books and stuff to uh, to a shop, and all of the proceeds go to help the Nepal Youth Foundation. So I donated a bunch of my ebooks so you can go check out the phone smith book there there's a gore how prop how cool is that uh we got a batarang i know there's a whole bunch of prints folks should go to cosplayshop.sortenvy.com to go check that out uh wow yaya han's bodysuits are already sold out <laughs> damn i was gonna get a bodysuit <laughs> so, he's supposed to be coming out with a male one at some point so that'll be yeah. pretty awesome i'll probably wait for that one i guess yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh anyway folks should go check that out again cosplay shop is really cool it's I, I love seeing these sort of things come together where uh cosplayers can do little things that help out in a big way so that's kind of cool and i'm happy to be a part of it that's super uh, awesome. The other thing, a couple other things I've got here. This one is I did a Nerf gun. Uh, I should have it with me, but I don't because I'm ill prepared. But uh, on eBay, I threw this uh, this Nerf gun up on eBay. Ta -da! It's a, a gun. I, I have a, a YouTube video of how I modded and painted this gun. And it's up on eBay. And there's only three hours left. So if you're watching this show after the fact, you're too late. But if you're watching it live and you want to get a piece of customized art that I made, there's your chance. Boom. Get bidding. That's right. Bidding has been uh, kind of crazy. Like my phone zaps me every time I get someone bids on it. Uh, and it's exciting. To, oh my gosh, it's up to $255 somehow, which is pretty cool. That's pretty fantastic. Pretty, yeah. If it goes well, then maybe I'd turn my career into 100% nerf modding. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see. Oh, this one was cool. Actually, so Emma and I were hanging out on the old uh, internet yesterday, and I was building something for a new tool that I have. Uh, I'm, I'm getting a CNC mill, which is very exciting. And everyone I know, including Emma, I know is jealous that I'm getting a CNC mill. <laughs> I'm crazy jealous. I might have to, uh, you know, hit you up for a couple of uh, projects. <laughs> That's right. Next time you come down to the old uh, states, you can come play with the CNC mill. Uh, so I built a table for it, and people seem pretty stoked about it. Check it out. There's my folding collapsible table that I built. The idea is that I'll put the CNC mill on the surface of that, and then I can fold it folds down so that it takes up less space. Uh, but everyone wanted to know uh, about the plans for my table. So I, I drew them up in SketchUp, and I put them for free on my website. So if you go to punishprops.com and go to the store, you can check out the super cool plans I have for making a table that I drew in SketchUp. You ever, uh, you ever use SketchUp, Emma? Uh, you know what? I haven't. I, I downloaded it at one point, and I was like trying to draw out plans, and I... 
Nope. <laughs> I, I went, actually, that's the first thing I've ever done in SketchUp, and I uh, did it all yesterday. They have videos that really explain. Uh, it's like tutorial videos. So if you just follow along with those, and we'll link, I'll link to both SketchUp and the videos in the description of this. If folks at home want to learn some really cool software, SketchUp is free. Uh, they have a pro version. I'm not sure what you get for that, but the version I got was free, and I drew up some really cool uh, plans that way. So folks should go definitely grab that and watch their videos because you can learn it really fast. Literally yeah. inside of half an hour, I was drawing the, the blueprint there. That's awesome. I will. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to check that out. <laughs> For sure. Uh, the last thing I have before we get started, I was just in New York City for an event called Construct, which was really fun. I'll have a video for it out here in the next couple days, sort of recapping the whole thing. Um, so, Emma, you most of the events you go to are like costume or like comic book conventions, right? Where like the yeah, overarching uh thing... Uh, it's basically anime cons and comic cons, and yeah, it's all basically uh, just cosplay oriented, and um, yeah. Right. Well, this one was very much crafting oriented. Like, no one wore a costume to the event. Well, actually, one dude wore a costume to the event. <laughs> he was a little wacky. Was that you? No. No, not you? <laughs> okay. uh, I was actually excited to go to an event where I didn't have to wear a costume. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was very much like maker oriented. There were a bunch of like professionals from Hollywood who do sculpting and makeup effects. Um, everyone, all of the panels were all based on like different skill sets, like sculpting and and uh, painting and and building stuff. So I did a panel on uh, foam or on like um, prop making basics, and I did a workshop on foam fabrication. Have you ever taken part in like an actual workshop at a convention? No, I haven't had the uh, the fortune to do that. Um, I guess there just aren't a lot of like uh, crafting oriented panels at the conventions that I go to. But that sounds like something that would be fantastic to take part in. Yeah. Um, so I'm pretty jealous that you were able to make it out there. It sounds like a really awesome uh, uh, event. It was super cool. Uh, the way it goes, and, and apparently they do this all the time in Europe, in super cool Europe. Um, is that you'll have a normal event like a convention uh, and then you'll have workshops where you pay a little bit extra to go to this workshop and it's like two to four hours long and you actually get to make and build stuff. And it's smaller than a panel. Like the one I did, there were only 10 people in it. So you get like good one-on-one -on -one, um, instruction from a professional showing you how to do the thing they do. Mm -hmm. uh, so folks at home, if you see at a convention, they have workshops where you actually get to make or build stuff. Uh, it's usually worth the ticket price, whatever that ends up being. Yeah, uh, definitely. Okay. I'm going to try and get some of those started for uh, Emerald City next year. We'll see how it goes. Oh, yeah, that would be fantastic. You should definitely do that. It is on the list. Uh, we're also going to try and do just some local ones, just like a, a one-off workshop like a full day like here in Seattle at some point I'll let you know when that's going down definitely all right cool that's all of the chit chat I uh, had lined up are you ready to tackle some questions yeah let's go for it all right this first one comes in from one of our regulars fearless facade he says, how long would it take to cast a typical prop in resin? I make my masks the Venetian way, which is time consuming, and I'm considering trying resin in the future. I don't know what the Venetian way is. Uh, have you done any molding and casting of masks, Emma? Um, I haven't. Uh, I mean, not as far as like uh, traditional masks. The mo the ones that I do are all um, latex, mm -hmm. and so I don't think that's really what he's looking for. Um, what's what's that process like, though? Um, so what I do is like I'll I'll have a head cast and I'll sculpt you know whatever like in the case of my treasure goblin I'll sculpt the uh, the whole face out and then um, usually in an oil based clay and then I will uh, mold it in stone um, I use UltraCal 30 and then uh, once that's done I can just uh, pour some latex in and do a uh, get a latex mask out of that. There you go. How many layers of latex do you usually put in there? 
Um, so I actually start by, uh, like I, I'll, I'll put, I'll brush on a layer of latex and then I'll actually fill the whole mold up with, uh, with latex and, um, just kind of let it sit for about 20 or 30 minutes. And what happens is the stone mold pulls, um, liquid out of the latex. So you get like this gel layer and then you pour the latex back out and you get this nice substantial layer of latex that you can just then let air dry. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. I hadn't even thought about that. If you, if it comes all the way up to like a neck hole, you just fill it right up. Yeah. And I mean, even if you can't fill up the whole thing, you can kind of slosh it around and get a good layer around everything. Yeah. I'm going to start playing with more latex coming up here pretty soon. Uh, not necessarily for casting masks or anything, but for doing um, coating on like foam armor. That'll be awesome. It's something that I've actually been really interested in since seeing Evil Ted's videos. I just haven't really had a chance to invest in like the, the spray gun right. um, that you would need for it. But um, I, I got one try of those. Out. Yeah, I got one of those uh, <laughs> critter spray guns. I got to use it a little bit. In fact, I just loaned it to my friend Mario today. So okay. he can play with it a little bit. But then once I, I'm going to rebuild my Titan armor, I'm going to uh, try it out. That'll be awesome. Um, I've done a bunch of casting of like rigid masks with like urethane plastic. So we've got a um, dragon priest mask that my wife made. And uh, usually we'll slush cast like four or five layers of urethane plastic in there. And it's like five, ten minutes per layer to cast a copy. So we can knock one out. Usually... It's still warm, so maybe knock one out every hour or so. That's um, not too bad, actually. Yeah. So there you go, Fearless Facade. That's that's everything you need to know about mask making. <laughs> not, <laughs> not really. A little bit. A little look into the, the world of mask making. A glimpse. <laughs> All right. Uh, this one comes in from Nate. I'll probably tackle it. Nate wants to know, hey, do you have any tips for molding foam props? I think what he means is building something out of foam and then making a mold of it as opposed to making casting foam out of a mold. Right. I'll go over both things. Um, I would recommend not using uh, EVA foam, squishy EVA foam as a base or a master for mold making because it's, it's hard to refine it to a nice smooth finish uh, like you could with wood or with plastic. Uh, if you're going to invest money in silicone and the time it takes to make the mold, I would recommend building your master out of something rigid that you can refine really, really well. Um, if you're going to cast foam props out of a mold, you want to use something like uh, uh, Flex Foam It or Foam It that uh, Smooth On sells. They're both expanding urethane foams that are really cool, except when it's squishy like a Nerf football. Those are pretty neat. Uh, and the other one's rigid. Uh, and you can find some good videos on that on the old YouTube. I haven't done much of that myself. Yeah. You ever... I haven't done it either. Um, I've actually got a project coming up where I'm going to need some like big horns. Mm -hmm. So I'm, uh, I've been kind of looking into that a little bit, but nothing too much so far. Have you done much with Peppercura? I have not really done anything with Peppercura. The most I did was a um, when Doctor Who was uh, still airing the seventh season or something, I made a, um, I can't even remember the name of it now, one of those metal guys. I made like a, a head that went over, but out of foam, but that was about it. I haven't done anything with like cardstock or um, that kind of stuff. Uh, we were able to do, well, you, um... You've got a 3D model around retainer, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've been able to 3D model um, horns and then backfill them with that expanding foam so that you get the rough shape mm -hmm. and then sculpt oh, okay. on top of it. Because a lot of times if you have horns that go in more than, like if they're just, just a curved like bull horn, um, they only go in one axis and they're easy to sculpt kind of flat-ish. But if they're yeah. like, curl or like do weird things like uh <laughs> i don't know like an antelope however they're yeah like, yeah getting, i know getting, what you're talking about yeah getting that 3d shape blocked out um it can be kind of tricky without something without a base to build it on so if you if you do have the opportunity to have someone or yourself 3d model the beforehand you could do it in pepakura and you'll have a hollow shell made out of cardboard 
that you could just fill with expanding foam. And uh, that'll give you a nice rigid base to work from. That's actually a fantastic idea. That's how we did the horns for our drogger. By we, oh. I mean my wife, Brittany. That's how Brittany did it. <laughs> <laughs> I had no part in that. She's the wizard. All right. Thank you, Nate. Good luck with all of your foam molding and prop making. All right. This one here comes from Jason Lee 01. He says he's got some blue LED strips to light up his Neptune blade weapon. Uh, he probably only needs a couple of feet at most. What would you use battery-wise to power it? Will one 9-volt battery be good enough? Hmm. Have you done much lighting, Emma? Uh, not really. Um, what you're going to want to do, though, is check the rating of your, um, your LED strips and see what those generally will require. Because usually it'll say like what voltage it needs um, to power it. Yeah, I know a lot of those strips are meant for automotive stuff, so they're 12 volts. Mm -hmm. um, if you put 12 volts into an LED strip that's not rated for that, you'll know right away, because it'll just burn out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if it is 12 volts, then uh, one of the you can run a nine volt battery to it. It'll, it just won't be as bright as it could be. Mm -hmm. uh, but if that's light enough for you, it'll work. Otherwise, eight double A's or eight triple A's will do it. And you can buy trays that hold eight batteries at a time. You just need to find a place on your customer prop to stow that. Uh, but that's that's a pretty good um, solution right there. Yeah. They do sell tiny, teeny, tiny little 12 volt batteries and it'll work. The problem is since it's this big, it doesn't last very long, especially if you have a lot of LEDs. Yeah, you're probably going to get a longer lifetime out of the uh, the eight um, yeah the eight double A's. Um, that's what uh, we ended up doing for our um, wings for our Diablo costumes. I haven't really done much with um, LEDs. I've mostly done L wire. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, we had like the big uh, <laughs> the big brick of double A batteries. <laughs> Yep, you can even look, if you want to get um, really into it, you can get like LiPo batteries or lithium whatever batteries that come in like little packaged doodads that come in different voltages. Um, yeah, lots, uh, lots to uh, look into there. In fact, Jason is in the chat and Lon is also in the chat. So if Jason, you talk to Lon, he knows all about this stuff. <laughs> I, see them t I see them talking in the chat right now. Um, and Lon is saying he uses the Adafruit Circuit Playground LED calculator. There you go. Awesome. I love seeing people in the chat. Uh, yeah, that's uh, super helpful. I'll just need to come in there and chill. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> All right, cool. Thank you, Jason, for your question. This next one here comes from Gonzalo. Oh, and Jason is saying it was a Cyberman. That's the mask that I was talking about. The Cyberman mask. It's been cool. a while since I watched Doctor Who. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this one's coming in from Gonzalo. What's the more time consuming or complicated or elaborate props that you have made? What's the what's the biggest what's the biggest, let's say, time sink <sighs> that you know it took you the most time to do? Um, I don't know if this would really be considered a prop, but uh, the wings for our uh, Diablo costumes were, we wired them up with L-wire to get kind of the glowy effect that the angel wings uh, do, so that took a while. Um, I haven't really done any really big props. Most of my stuff has just been like small foam fabricated things. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, I'd say that those wings are definitely the biggest time sink that I've gotten into. <laughs> I know I've burned a lot of uh, brain cells trying to figure out the best way to do the uh, angel Diablo angel wing oh, effect. Oh yeah. yeah, I yeah. Oh, well, there's tons of ways I've thought about. I thought it'd be really cool to do like fiber optic wires or something with like that are. are Anyway, it would be awesome, but I don't have the cash for that because yeah. the amount of fiber optic cables that you would need is just a nightmare. <laughs> um, I would say probably the most time-consuming costume had to be the Draugr that my wife and I did. I know I have personally put over 200 hours into that. Um, uh, let's see. Prop? Probably... 
probably the StarCraft Ghost Rifle I did because that one took a long time because I screwed up a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you know what? I guess um, I didn't even think about my Asari headpiece. Oh, yeah, that's uh, right. That I think I spent about 100 hours making. It took about 60 hours to sculpt, I think. And then I spent another 20 or 30 molding and casting it. So that was also the first time I had ever molded anything. So wow. I was super nervous and paranoid. that Because basically, if you if you screw up the mold, your sculpt is ruined. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, because you did it all. What kind of clay did you sculpt it in? Uh, it was oil-based clay, right. but because like it's got such deep undercuts, and I did it in a two-part mold, so like the tentacles were all, it, it, yeah. It, basically, when you pull apart the mold, it's it's ruined. <laughs> I got you. Yeah, I did um, a sculpt like that. I did a handsome Jack mask, and once I pulled the mold off of it, yeah, the sculpt was a, was a goner. <laughs> yeah. You only get one try at that, folks. Yeah, that's the downside to make it like mask making stuff is usually your sculpt ends up ruined. But I find um, like trying to make props out of clay for me is a lot easier because you can just keep refining it and keep playing around with it. And then eventually you end up with a product that's moldable. So mm -hmm. You got it. Cool. All right. Well, there you go, Gonzalo. There's a couple examples of some supremely difficult things that we've done. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of tears involved. <laughs> a lot of emotion. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Chris wants to know. Uh, he said he has... Oh, cool. He got one of my books. And he was wondering, uh, what kind of vinyl cutter do I have? Um, mm -hmm. I explain, in, in a lot of the stuff I do, I explain that when I make stencils, I use a vinyl cutter. Um, have you ever used a vinyl cutter or... Or... Uh, yeah, we've actually got like a little, uh, it's called a Silhouette Cameo, and it's something that you can pick up at Michael's for um, like maybe 250 or 300 bucks. Um, and it's like, it's basically an electronic paper cutter, but it also cuts vinyl and that kind of stuff. Um, and it's been super handy. I think we got it a few months ago, and uh, I, I love it. <laughs> now, that one, you can actually just feed it your own, like, vectors and stuff, right? Um, yeah. So there's, like, it comes with um, a free program, and you can, like, upgrade to the designer edition. And it's only the designer edition that uses vector files, but the free edition, you can just use, like, two color JPEGs. So, like, a white and black JPEG, you just plug it in, and it'll turn it into a cut file for you um, so it's super convenient cool I know that when I was shopping around for them this was a couple of years ago I ended up not going with those because a lot of them had their own proprietary software and you had to like buy patterns to cut stuff out yeah so um, when we were looking into it there's another competitor to the silhouette which I think is called the cricket mm -hmm. or cricket or something yeah, and that, that makes too. you use its proprietary software and you have to buy all of your designs from what I understand but the silhouette software has been great so far and is super easy to use so I highly recommend it to anyone that's looking into like making vinyl decals or um, stencils and that kind of yeah. stuff it's pretty neat. Um, I ended up getting the uh, KNK. The company's called Click and Cut. Here's the thing I got. The, and yes, it's stupid expensive. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's it's super professional, really awesome uh, vinyl cutter. The huge benefit you get out of this guy is that it will cut two feet wide, and it will cut wow. as long as you can feed it vinyl. That's so, awesome. You don't have to work with just a small bed. You can cut out either a lot yeah. of things at once or one giant thing if you want. Um, the one that we have does, um, we just use 12 by 12 sheets of vinyl, but I think it can also handle rolls as well. Right. Um, we just haven't really had the need to try it out with rolls, um, but it has like a little, a little tiny uh, slicer in the back to cut off of rolls of vinyl. Um, yeah. Yeah, they're neat. Uh, folks who are wanting to do more like stencil work, and you can buy, and we'll link to it, uh, when I, the stuff that I use. You can buy low-tax stencil vinyl, which is really cool. It's transparent blue so that you can see through it when you're trying to line up your stencils, which is handy. Mm -hmm. um, and it's low-tax, so it won't, hopefully won't peel your paint off when you pull it off. 
Um, a lot of the other vinyl that you purchase is meant to be permanent or outdoors type stuff. And it'll say like, this will last six years if you yeah. stick it on the side of your house. Yeah, yeah. All, uh, all that stuff, like it's you use it as like car decals or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, Coco and I are actually, in addition to the patches, we sell um, like little vinyl decals in our Etsy shop as well. And uh, yeah, like you've got the indoor rated stuff and the outdoor rated stuff that lasts between two to six years. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's uh, definitely worth checking out if you guys are and, and like I said the price point on those has come way way down and I mm -hmm. like the one I have is fantastic but I will tell you what you just the 12 inch sheet like most of everything I cut off is ends up being way smaller than that like exactly. I don't need it and it takes up a lot of space so if folks um, are, I recommend well, people the, check out that that what was it the silhouette the silhouette cameo yeah and the nice thing too is it comes with a like a sticky cutting mat so if you just if you have like a little piece of vinyl this big you can stick it on the cutting mat and just stick the cutting mat in and tell it how big of the space you have to work with and it'll it'll cut it out on that area cool yeah good stuff people should go play with that more it's neat <laughs> I, yeah, I love it's mine so do I. It's fantastic. And like I said, it's super easy to use. So <laughs> I have, um, uh, I can't really move it though. My, my vinyl cutter, let's see. Uh, I can't do it. My bandsaw is just covered in stickers. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually just started covering our embroidery machines. We've got like a lineup of the Mass Effect cast on the bottom of my embroidery machine. And, um, I just picked up actually a couple of stickers from uh, Molly Jackface. Yeah. Uh, from Inquisition, I think she got you to cut some stickers out for her last time yep. she was down. So I was I gonna say. Up a couple of uh, stickers from her at Northwest Fan Fest this weekend. That's so they've awesome. got a new home. <laughs> cool. Yeah, we have a couple. I have a butt sticker right over there. It's a. <laughs> man, it's sparkly vinyl. It's it's fabulous. <laughs> yeah, she was also out of the sparkly solar heads, so I was sad. <laughs> oh, well, I'll tell you what. I still have her vinyl, and I have the the file, so I can make you one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, Chris, for your question. This has been Vinyl Cutter Weekly with Bill and Emma. <laughs> they should start sending us uh, ad revenue for a how much we start pumping out or pimping out their machines. Oh, don't you worry. We Brit's got a link an Amazon affiliate link in the chat already. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right. This next one comes from Ashley cosplay. Ashley says, I've been playing with the idea of making a model or a mold of my head and was wondering what would be the best way to do it, especially with long hair. Thank you. You ever do any life casting? I have, and it's a little different than the um, the video that you've got up. Um, mine's a little more of a quick and dirty, lazy, well, I don't know about lazy way of doing it, but um, basically when I made my head cast, I just put on a bald cap, and um, my husband just wrapped my head in plaster bandages. Um, so we kind of skipped the alginate step, and just went with plaster bandages and um, I mean for what I do it worked out fine because like the alginate will definitely get a way more detailed uh, head cast but um, with just the plaster bandages you just basically get a rough shape and like you can still see where the eyes and the mouth is or I keep hitting my mic <laughs> but uh, and that worked out really well and I've been using that since uh, I made my first Asari headpiece so that's how I did mine. Yeah, I've done that too. I have a, a, a plaster bandage casting of my face. Uh, what I ended up doing was like covering it in Vaseline and then slush casting some plastic in it just to get this part of my face. Mm -hmm. And then I sculpted my Robin mask on there. Right, yeah. Mine, um, like we did the front half of my face first no we probably did the back first and then the front because it would be awkward sitting with your right. front face covered for like an hour <laughs> and a half but um and then we just put the pieces together and i filled mine with ultra cal um, so it weighs a ton but um yeah it's super sturdy yeah we that, and we did the same thing just with the uh, alginate and of course we'll have a link to our uh face casting video in the description uh i recommend folks go watch it if only for the poop jokes there are a <laughs> lot of a lot of childish behavior going on 
Um, if you are going to use plaster bandages, make sure you put tons of Vaseline, especially on like your eyebrows and anywhere that there's hair on your face, um, because the plaster bandages will be un really yeah. uncomfortable otherwise. <laughs> uh, Ashley Cosplay is asking about what to do with your long hair, though. Yeah, so um, when I did mine, I literally just tucked mine up and, and put a bald cap on with some spirit gum. Um, and that worked out really well. So just like, yeah, tuck your hair back, bald cap or a swim cap. Um, yeah. I've done it with, one with both. Work. Yeah. And then if, if the, uh, your hair actually can create a little bit of extra head volume in the casting, when you pop it out, you can go back in once, if you have a hydrocal buck of your head done, if there's a little extra volume, you can go in and sculpt away that extra hair shape if you want. I mean, the other thing is, if it's causing extra volume, chances are you need that space if you're going to be making a mask or anything anyway. So if you just leave it, then you know for sure you've got enough space to uh, put your hair when you're wearing said mask. There you go. Cool. Well, good luck, Ashley Cosplay, on your face mask. Be safe <laughs> out there. Get friends to help you. Yes. <laughs> Uh, this quick question from Jason Lee. He knows I was just in New York City, and he wants to know if I brought back a suitcase full of pizza. <laughs> I did not, but while I was there, I ate. Yep, I ate an entire pizza. Yeah, Ooh. I was just I was just doing a slice count in my head, and I was like, "Did I have eight? Yes, I ate at least eight slices of pizza while I was in New York." <laughs> we have um, the on the West Coast here. People have a hard time knowing what pizza is. So I gotta go back to New York where I grew up to get right. I forgot that you're from New York. Yeah, so the definitely different pizza styles. Oh yeah. But I got my fill. Mm, for sure. How is the pizza, Will? Awesome. Will's giving me the double thumbs up. Me and <laughs> my shopmate Will were out there and we were on a quest. <laughs> a quest to get pizza. Actually, quick pizza story. We got we found a place that had great pizza. We between the two of us ordered an entire pie. And we're like, this is what we'll do. We'll eat half the pizza now, and then we'll get the rest to go so that later we'll have more pizza. And instead, the two of us just went all Lady and the Tramp on that and just <laughs> ate the entire pizza <laughs> until, when, our, um, until our faces met in the middle. <laughs> whenever Coco and I order pizza, I always end up having to get my own because he insists on ordering his own large pizza just for him. So I end up with an entire pizza that I have to eat myself. <laughs> All right. Mm, now I want pizza for dinner. And I'm back in Seattle and I can't have any. No. Dumb. All right. This next one's from Old Gamers Rule. Uh, I have a question. Reference getting a, a chrome finish or a high polished metal look on a foam helmet just finished up a centurion helmet and i want to get that finished thanks i'll tell you what it's going to be hard to get that mirrored chrome finish on something unless you can sand it down to a high shine like uh with if you if you are dead set on using foam for that then you're going to want to seal it with something rigid like epsilon have you ever used epsilon emma yeah, um, I've only used it once uh, when I was working on my Cole costume earlier this year. I kind of gave it a try. And um, yeah, you'll definitely want to sand it down super smooth. Um, I imagine, like, I haven't gotten anything mirror uh, finished with that before, but um, I'm really bad at sanding, so... <laughs> Um, You're probably I uh, better, yeah, for giving that kind of advice. Um, totally. If you do go that route, if you build it out of foam, you're going to need a lot of layers of Epsilon, or you could use a urethane uh, resin as well. Um, you want to use several layers. So like, put a couple layers on, let it cure all the way, sand it. Put a couple more layers on, let it cure all the way, sand it. I would do that probably like six good layers so that you can sand it down to a nice smooth finish. You can prime it, sand it, get it really, really shiny. And then you could actually go get it chromed. You could do that. Um, if you're not, uh, let's does see if the, I can find just, this. just if I could interject here, does the chroming yeah. process use a lot of heat? Cause if it's made out of foam, I'd be concerned about it warping. Cause I seem to recall that, um, Vulpin had an issue with one of his Daft Punk helmets where it, it actually warped from the chroming process. So I'd be um, a little bit worried yeah, about I'm not really that. Sure. 
However, there is, I think this has got to be there. I'm not sure if this is the right page or not. Uh, All Clad is a company that does, they say, uh, airbrush ready, fast dry, natural metal model finishes. Mm. They uh, apparently, some of their paints are really good. Well, I, I'll double check and put a link in the notes for this one. Uh, but apparently, their paints are really great if you need a chrome type finish as well. So, there you go. Um, Couple options. Mostly, it's getting the t the surface texture to what you want before you're going to yeah. get a good high shine on it. Lots so, and lots of wet sanding. <laughs> lots of sanding. Yeah, wet sanding too. And then you can get like a uh, there like a swirl remover and like all these rubbing compounds to get it really shiny. All right. Thank you, old gamers rule. <clears throat> this next one comes from Cyber Patriot. Uh, I'm new to molding, actually working on Umu 30 tonight. After mastering the noob silicone, what do you suggest you move on to? Uh, what do you prefer to use? And have you used the smooth on Equinox putty silicone? I have not. Have you used that, Emma? I am uh, in the same... Uh, I've only ever used Umu as well, so... Okay. <laughs> I am also a casting noob. <laughs> I'm going to look up this putty silicone because I don't know what it is. Uh, Equinox putty silicone. Well, that's cool. I, I'm gonna guess it's like, like a thing you'd mash together, and then it's like a, what's that? Right. What's the uh, silly putty? Like silly putty, and then you mash it together. Um, I usually use if I'm making a brush on mold, I'll use uh, Rebound 25 for that. It's a pretty good all-purpose uh, silicone for most things. Uh, you have about, I don't know, five-minute working time, five, ten-minute working time, and then it's like a six-hour cure, so it's pretty good. And uh, I usually have a bucket of it on hand anyway, so I'll, it's meant for brush-on molds, but I'll use it for dump molds too uh, if I have it. Um, and then I will I like tap plastic silicone RTV, which is a tin cure silicone. Uh, very comparable to Smooth On's um, Mold Max uh, 30, which I just used on my uh, Tomb Raider bow, which is over there. So I'm pointing, you can't see it, but <laughs> I promise it's over there. Um, those are pretty good. And I have used some of their more expensive um, platinum ones like Mold Star. The thing with platinum is that it tends to be finicky about curing inhibition. So if you're looking to take the next step, I say go for like Mold Max 30. That's a pretty good, uh, good one that won't uh, inhibit on you. So <laughs> I'd be scared to keep any platinum cure stuff just because I work with latex so much. And apparently, if you have latex even in the same room as yeah. platinum cure stuff, it can just screw everything up yeah or even like i know i've got some yeah uh latex gloves that'll ruin yeah it. yeah so that's why i i try like there are a lot of good reasons to use platinum cure silicone uh it doesn't shrink as much and uh, it can be more durable but if it curing inhibition is like like a dagger in your heart it sucks uh, so much yeah <laughs> going back to that um Starcraft rifle I did. There was some inhibition on there that made me just vomit tears. Oh, no. <laughs> so there you go, Cyber Patriot. Uh, try Mold Max 30, or depending on the hardness, the short hardness you need. One of the Mold Max ones. Next step. Good step. <laughs> I do like that they're different. Short hardnesses are different colors. So the Mold Max, I think, 30 was pink. So I have a really pretty pink mold over there. That's pretty handy. I yeah. was, um, I had, when I first started mold making, I was using some Illumilite um, uh, silicone, which is like, it was this super handy kit for beginners because it came with the resin and the silicone and it just, you could get started really easily and you didn't have to spend a fortune because it was like this little container of it. Um, so when I first got the Umu, I was very impressed that it was this pretty purple that I could, because I think one of them is blue and one of them is pink and it mixes together and makes this really pretty purple yeah. lilac mold. So <laughs> it is, it's so pretty. The Umu yeah. 25 and 30 different shore hardnesses. Um, yeah, that's good stuff. Let's see. Someone, uh, Gib Tall is pointing out he likes Mold Star 
20T. I like that a lot too. It's actually transparent, um, which I've never really needed to use it for its transparency, uh, but it does cure completely in 30 minutes. Oh, so, that'd be super handy. Yeah, it has a short pot life. You have like five minutes to work with it and then that's it. But yeah. for like small, quick molds, I've done things where I'll laser cut a master, glue it together, pour it under silicone, and be casting copies all inside of like an hour. Wow. Really yeah, you especially when fast. you're under a tight deadline. <laughs> yeah, and I've never had that stuff have any curing inhibition either. It's handy. That's awesome. So I like it's I think it's almost done, but I just bought like a little trial size thing of that. And especially if you're only making small molds out of it, just buy the trial size thing. That'd be mm -hmm. fine. Yeah. All right. This next question comes from Fernie. Uh, it's a little something I'm excited about. With the announcement of Fallout 4, yeah, Fernie wants to build a pit boy. Doesn't know where to start. Where would you begin on such a project? Also, can you recommend a fandom website for reference images because they seem to be scarce? Uh, have you ever seen one of the alarm clocks, the Pit Boy alarm clocks that they made? I haven't actually. They made one uh, alarm clock. There it is. Uh, so they're hard. To, those are hard to get uh, because they are pretty rare. I think. Let me see here. Wait, tell me this is actually for sale. <laughs> In which case we stop or we no, start watching Bill bidding. No. <laughs> Currently unavailable. The Fallout 3 Vault Tech uh, 3000. Oh, those are fantastic. Yeah, they were only available for a limited time, but uh, people got their hands on them and molded and cast copies of them. So if you look on Etsy for like Pit Boy, uh, I know a, a couple of people I know who sell them. You can get a copy of that clock to modify into your own Pit Boy that you can wear. Um, in fact, I've painted a couple of them before. That's awesome. Yeah, if you're looking for the easiest route and the most accurate route, you can uh, go that way. If you want to make it yourself and you're looking for references, look for pictures of the Pit Boy clock. The Pit Boy 3000 clock, because then uh, you can get people. I'm sure there are photos of like all from all sides. Um, what would you? Uh, you know, you you're into sculpting with clay. Would you attempt to sculpt something like that out of clay? Um, I it depends on how uh, how comfortable you are with clay. Um, I've seen some people that are capable of getting really sharp lines and are really good at that kind of stuff. I personally wouldn't. I'm better at like organic textures um, and not so much with like the the, the rigid sculpted straight lines. Um, uh, honestly, that seems like a project that might be good with um, EVA foam. It could be, yeah. You, if you're just looking for a one-off prop that you're going to wear, you could totally knock that out in EVA foam. Um, personally, I would probably uh, sculpt it from rigid materials because that's what I'm most comfortable with. From yeah, like plastic exactly. and wood. And then I would mold and cast it. That's probably how I would end up doing it. But it does seem kind of silly to do all that work when there's already a clock available. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and there are also a uh, a couple of really talented people that are um, selling casts of Pip Boys right now. Yeah. I think um, Alan Amis, yeah, is, is, has a a really nice uh, copy available. So yep, or I'm sure people have like 3D models that they'll they'll 3D print as well. Yeah. So you've got a lot of options if you just want to get your paws on a wearable Pip Boy. You got some options. So good luck. All right, thank you, Fernie B. For your questions. All right, another one here from, oh, not a question. Uh, next one. This one's from Nate. What are some of your dream props or costumes that you would make if you had an unlimited budget and time? He says he would make a Destiny Sparrow. I know someone who is making a Destiny Sparrow right now. <laughs> what's on your bucket list, Emma? Oh, what's on my bucket list? Let's see. I've got a big list of, uh, uh, I've got a big folder of things that I eventually want to make, and of course I don't have it on here right now. Um, these days, sorry, I, I'm on like a really big Dragon Ball Z hype train right now since they've just announced the new series, and so um, like any of the aliens in Dragon Ball, uh, I would love to make. 
um, just like sculpt like really big sculpting projects that I don't have like a body form to make yet. Um, those would be really cool. Um, let me let me think about that. What what are you? Uh, what's on your bucket list? Um, I know I've mentioned this one a couple times before, but I want to build Corbin Dallas's apartment from the Fifth Element. And that like would be full fantastic. size, everything in there. I want to build it on a trailer so that I can take it places. And I'll take it to San Diego Comic Con, and then I won't need a hotel room. I'll just stay in the apartment. <laughs> yeah, that would be fantastic. <laughs> that one's up there. I do have uh, an extensive list of things I want to props I want to build. Uh, mostly, it's, it comes down to um, every time I see a movie, I go, oh, I want to make that. Oh, I want to make that too. And that, yeah. and that, and that too. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely uh, know that feeling. Um, pretty much, like, I would love to make any, everything from the, uh, the Mass Effect series. If you name a character, I probably want to cosplay them. Um, Garrus, making a Garrus costume would be amazing. Oh, that, so yeah, Garrus, me and Garrus were pretty tight. We were, we were yeah. buddies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, you know, speaking of Fallout, here's a good prop that I would really love to make. I want to make the railway rifle from Fallout 3. It's awesome. I'm not familiar with that. Okay. Let me look well, that up real quick. Yeah, you have to build it. You have to go get all these parts. But it's basically, I think, like a like a air-powered uh, railroad spike launcher and when you fire it it makes a choo-choo noise like a train. <laughs> oh my goodness it's oh, cool okay i see it that, yeah that's fantastic yeah it's that's pretty awesome. big it's a rifle it's got all kinds of doodads and 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 uh nernies and greebles on it and it's uh and and it's fun to use because you shoot people with railroad spikes you could like spike their head to a wall uh, that's, and it's it looks all gross and dirty uh it's pretty cool so that one's up there for sure that's awesome <laughs> all right let's see this next one here uh old gamer old gamers rule wants to follow up on the painting question would i be able to paint a poly polyurethane resin mixed with metal powder uh and awesome i do have some all clad cool yeah, you can do that. Um, actually, I'll tell you a trick I learned this last weekend. Um, I like. You ever do any cold casting, Emma? Uh, a little bit. Um, I would mostly just make like little uh, pendants for like mm -hmm. Morgan and that kind of stuff, and I'll do like a gold cold cast kind of thing. Yeah. So this is similar to that. In fact, I was playing around with that today when I was in New York. The uh, I was at the. Um, the complete sculptor and that store is extraordinary you would have a field day there it is amazing. oh i'm sure yeah so they have lots of different powders that you would use for casting and for other stuff i use them for cold casting so i have now i have two different coppers uh <laughs> stainless steel aluminum bronze brass you name it i've got it um this dude i was talking to there had some models they were um, i think toys of the um, Jaegers from Pacific Rim, these big honking toys that he repainted. What he did was he took, uh, what was it? Shellac is what he used and mm -hmm. mixed metal powder into that and then brushed that on his models and a couple of layers so that it sort of embedded a layer of metallic powder on the outside of the model. Oh, that's a really interesting idea. Yeah, and then he was able to buff it like metal, and then he was able to tarnish it. So he hit it with some uh, oxidizing solution to rust it. So these were like, it was like the Cherno Alpha, but it was all like patinated, all green and stuff. It looked really amazing. That's really cool. I'm going to have to keep that in mind. Yeah, so you could, uh, old gamers rule, you could use a polyurethane resin, or I would recommend trying out some shellac, which mm -hmm. I have to add that to my list. I need to go buy some shellac, which, by the way, is shellac is uh, comes from a bug's butt, everyone. It's bug That's good to out. know. <laughs> <laughs> I did, the, I was like, shellac, what exactly is shellac? Oh, some bug poops it out. All right, fantastic. <laughs> some stuff for you to try let's see here 
Uh, Cyber Patriot wants to know, could you use fiberglass in place of Epsilon? So if you're smoothing or, or coating your, uh, your foam piece, could you use fiberglass instead? Uh, have you done much in the uh, fiberglassing realm? Uh, I haven't done anything in the fiberglassing realm. All right. Well, let me tell you, it's toxic. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, t uh, fiberglass resin is similar to the um, uh, the Epsilon resin, except that fiberglass is usually polyester, which is pretty toxic. So if you are going to do that, work in a very well-ventilated area, wear a respirator. Don't breathe it in. It causes depression. Uh, <laughs> but you can definitely use that to coat your foam. And our... Um, our Draugr helmets were coated with foam. They're foam, but they're coated with... Uh, fiberglass resin on the glass resin on the outside and then fiberglass resin and cloth on the inside to make them nice and rigid. Oh, cool. Yeah. And so worked. you didn't run into any problems with that melting the foam at all? I take no, it. The, it won't melt EVA. It will awesome. melt uh, extruded polystyrene. So don't put it on your insulation foam, but it will definitely hold up with EVA. Another awesome. mark for EVA foam. <laughs> <laughs> So you can definitely do that. Again, you're going to run into the case of if you want it to be a smooth surface, you'll have to put several layers on and do a lot of sanding mm -hmm. to get a nice smooth surface. But it'll definitely work. Uh, we have time for just uh, one or two more here. Let's see. This one is from... Uh, oh, this one came in earlier. Don't try this at home. Another regular wants to know, uh, who are some premier prop makers in the New York City area, professional or otherwise? Thanks very much. Uh, I don't really know any in particular. I will say my friend Alyssa, who ran uh, the construct event from Propped Up Creations, her and some of her friends are up in New York City, and they are awesome. So you should definitely go to Propped Up Creations and check them out. That's uh, exactly who I was going to suggest as well. I'm not terribly familiar with people over on the East Coast just because I'm on the West Coast. Yeah, me too. Um, but yeah, Alyssa and, uh, is fantastic, so go check her out. Yeah, a lot of the people that we met there last weekend weren't necessarily prop makers, but they are into um, uh, like creature effects. They do a lot of like zombie, uh, like live events where you go get scared by zombies. I don't know what you would call those, but a lot of the guys there did sculpting and makeup and uh, you know art type stuff, which is really cool. I can't actually if you go to constructeffects.com, uh, there and go look at the guest list. A lot of those guys are local to the New York area, so I recommend you go check that out. We'll put a link to that uh, in the description, the list of all the guys who are at Construct, uh, and definitely go check out a lot of those guys because they are freaking rad. Let's see here. Yeah, I guess. Cool. Uh, I'd say uh, I'd say we have time for one more. Um, Patrick. Let's go with this one from Patrick. Any tips for painting white polystyrene like the packaging stuff? I've done some tests, but all my paint melts it. Oh. <laughs> Have you ever done that before where you spray like spray paint on something and it just goes bleh, melts it? You know, I ha I've, I've fortunately, um, I read enough cosplay forums when I was younger to know not to do that. <laughs> um, everyone recommends that you uh, seal it with something, whether it be like PVA glue or um, uh, I think I've seen people use acrylic paint before. Um, something like Epsilon would probably work as well. But you just want to seal it first before you start spray painting. Yes. Um, I did have one situation uh, where my husband and I were working on some armor together, and he was making um, a gauntlet out of some uh, pink foam. And I think he was covering, trying to cover it with Sintra, and he was putting epoxy on the pink foam, and it just melted. <laughs> yeah, that'll happen. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Uh, like I always say with a lot of that stuff, Try, small scale tests are good. Some yes. spray paints are safe. Um, acrylic paints are always safe to use. So you could even brush on a layer of acrylic paint and then spray over that once the acrylic is dried, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I've actually also seen people use Bondo to seal like pink foam and that kind of stuff and it doesn't melt it. So there's that too. There you go. There's a handful of things for you to try, Patrick. All right. Uh, hey, that's it. 
Thank you everyone who brought your awesome questions. You guys are so super cool. And thank you for everyone in the chat. We had a crap ton of people in there just, yeah. just uh, providing all kinds of goodness down there. Uh, thank you, Emma, for being on the show. Uh, it's been super thank fun. Thank you for having me. You are most welcome. It was a pleasure. Once again, folks, if you want to see what Emma's up to, look up Emma Bellish on uh, Facebook or go do what I'm going to do right now and go to her Etsy store <laughs> and buy all the destiny patches. <laughs> yeah. If you want any custom embroidery for your costumes, hit me up. Yes, definitely. And I, I will certainly be doing that myself. I think I'll start where to go. The Titan one. I might have to <laughs> <laughs> all right, folks, until next week, thank you again so much for hanging out here on prop live and we'll see you all on the other side. Bye. See ya.